With our computer-controlled radios and devices like this six-axis gyro stabilizer module, which I reviewed recently, it's very easy to forget the basics of servo control. Indeed, in these days of bind and fly and ready to fly models, perhaps you never even thought about the basics to start with. This little servo tester I made in around 1993, so that's 27 years old now. And recently I purchased this little module which will read the PWM signal going, in this case, to a little test servo over there. So as I move the servo tester, we can see the servo moving at the top there and the value changing on the meter. At the same time, we can see it on the oscilloscope. What we're seeing on the oscilloscope to begin with is the frequency or refresh rate of the signal going to the servo. If we look at the oscilloscope trace, we can see that the pulse is repeating every 20 milliseconds. And if we remember our theory, frequency is 1 over the period, which gives us a refresh rate of 50 hertz or 50 times a second. That's the standard for the majority of servos that you will find. There are some specialized ones that operate at higher frequencies. I changed the oscilloscope time base now so that we can see just the single pulse. And at its lowest setting on the tester here, we're looking for around about one millisecond or 1000 microseconds. As we move the control, we can see the servo moving. Around halfway is 1500 and at the top is 2000 microseconds. This is especially important to know when you're setting up a model for the first time and I found that when using these smaller servos it becomes increasingly important to make sure they're set up correctly. I needed to do that on a, a new model that I built recently. This would have helped me in that instance greatly. You don't need a fancy oscilloscope to be able to look at these waveforms but it certainly helps in some instances to see exactly what's going on. I built this little oscilloscope just from a kit. And as you can see, it works really well. What we would do then is to move the servo to its center point at around about one and a half milliseconds or 1500 microseconds. Then we can fix the arm of our choice onto the servo at as close to 90 degrees as we can get it. Now because there is a spline on here you almost always will never get it exactly on and that is the closest that I can do with this particular servo. That is why on our transmitter we have the trim controls so that we can set it perfectly. Now from the middle point if we increase we go 45 degrees to one side and then decrease 45 degrees the other side making 90 degrees in total. Let's now take a real world example and connect this little module to an installation on a model to check how it's functioning. This then was the plane that I was having some fun setting up. Part of the fun is because it's using the SBUS to PWM converter. When I power the model on, you'll see a green light flashing here which is the gyro stabilization setting itself up and I want you to watch what the numbers are on the display. We saw then before it bound with the transmitter the gyro was initializing with the green light flashing it was dead on 1500 once it had set itself up, it then moved up to 1503, 1504, which is the signal coming from the transmitter. If I put the aileron up, we can see it doesn't go all the way to 1000. It stops about 100 microseconds off, but that's more than enough throw, I would say, for this little model. And in the downward direction, again, it doesn't go completely to 2000, but that's not a problem. I guess that that could be trimmed out again using the transmitter. If we look now at the elevator servo up here, which I've got almost dead on 90 degrees, we can see the value very close to 1500 there. And if I move the elevator down again, 
it's about 100 microseconds away from maximum, but more than enough. And similarly in the up direction. So everything is working as it should do. I've been able to validate the output of the stabilizer. I hope you found that of interest.